Today on the newscast, the United States sharing intel with the Taliban. Plus, Israel's former national security advisor joins us to break down the consequences of the Afghanistan disaster. And Israeli Prime Minister Bennett met President Biden at the White House today. Get all the breaking details coming up. Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. The fallout continues from yesterday's deadly double suicide bombing outside Kabul airport. 13 U.S. service members killed, many more wounded, and at least 95 Afghans also murdered in this heinous terror attack. ISIS-K, which is an offshoot of ISIS, claimed responsibility for this terror rampage. Lots of questions still remains surrounding this attack. Uh, one of the main ones obviously is, why did the United States trust the Taliban to provide security around Kabul airport? We discussed all of this in a one hour live stream yesterday. You can check it out right here in our archives. Just go to newscast and you'll find it there. While you're there, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. So again, we dug into all of this for 60 minutes yesterday, but one of the big questions that emerged was the fact that the United States apparently, and President Biden did not deny this at his press conference yesterday, provided the Taliban with a list of U.S. citizens and Afghan allies who have worked with the United States over the past 20 years in Afghanistan. The Taliban was given a list and told by the U.S., hey, let these people through, let them go to the airport. Trusting the Taliban. There's no other way to say it, folks. What did the Taliban do with this list? Some have called it a kill list, and rightly so. U.S. citizens in the hands of the Taliban, the names, the, the identifications of U.S. citizens, Afghans, the Taliban has to be very happy right now to have that information, that sensitive information in their possession. Why would the United States share that info? It goes along with the complete debacle we have seen develop over the past two weeks in Afghanistan. Something to bring up, the uh, commander of U.S. Central Command, Kenneth McKenzie, also had some very revealing comments along these lines yesterday. I want to quote them directly from foxnews.com. He said, we share versions of this information with the Taliban so that they can actually do some searching out there for us. Wow, so we are relying on the Taliban to do search and rescue missions uh, for American citizens. Not a very comforting thought. He went on to say they don't get the full range of information that we have, but we give them enough time to act, time and space to try and prevent these attacks. Again, President Biden has said time and time again, as has members of his cabinet, we do not trust the Taliban. The facts on the ground, folks, say otherwise. Sharing a list of U.S. citizens and Afghan allies, sharing intelligence and sensitive information with the Taliban, and relying to an extent, according to the commander of U.S. Central Command, on the Taliban to search and rescue Americans, apparently, and bring them to safety at Kabul airport. McKenzie went on to say, our plan includes reaching out to the Taliban, who are actually providing the elder security around the airfield to make sure they know what we expect them to do to protect us. And we will continue to coordinate with them going forward. Two things here. Number one, he just said we were relying on the Taliban to provide security to secure the perimeter around the airfield where 5,200 American troops as of yesterday were still there. They were still based uh, at Kabul airport. Secondly, he talks about the Taliban, what the Taliban needs to do to protect us. Folks, you heard it. We are now relying apparently as Americans, or at least Americans on the ground in Afghanistan, are relying on the Taliban to protect them. Who would have thought 20 years ago in the wake of 9-11 that we would come to a day when we are sharing sensitive information and intel with the Taliban and relying on the Taliban to protect Americans in Afghanistan. Folks, it is a world turned upside down, but that to me was one of the biggest news items to emerge 
from yesterday's horrific events, and I wanted to share that with you. One more thing to discuss before we go to our interview with Israel's former National Security Advisor, General Yaakov Amidror, one of Israel's foremost authorities on national security, worked for two years as, again, National Security Advisor under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Today, along those lines, uh, the new Israeli Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, met with Joe Biden at the White House for 50 minutes. And I think the big item to come out of that was Joe Biden said on his watch, he will never allow Iran to acquire nuclear weapons. He said he wants to use diplomacy to settle the Iran nuclear crisis, but if that doesn't work, he will look at other options. Ostensibly, that means a military option. And folks, I have to say, I'm not buying it, uh, especially after we've seen what we've seen. Uh, in Afghanistan over these past two weeks. Still no retaliation against ISIS-K for yesterday's terror attack. I don't think that the Biden administration right now has very much credibility in dealing with threats around the world, specifically the Iran nuclear threat. But he essentially told the Israeli prime minister certainly what he wanted to hear. Hey, we're on board with you. We will not allow Iran to, to acquire the bomb and all options are on the table. Barack Obama said the same thing. And remember, he cut that disastrous Iran nuclear deal. There has to be, folks, a credible threat of force backing up the words that are coming out of the White House. And right now, now in particular, in the wake of this ongoing Afghan debacle, that kind of credibility just is not seen in Washington, D.C. Hey, America's allies, can they trust America right now? And certainly our adversaries, whether it's China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, terror organizations around the world and beyond, they are literally scoffing at the U.S. right now. They're feeling emboldened and empowered. And again, the word I've been using is accelerate. They are looking to accelerate, perhaps, their plans now that they see the leader of the free world, basically MIA, in this crucial, crucial moment in world history. Hey, to talk about all of this and the repercussions of Afghanistan, the Bennett-Biden meeting, and the Iran nuclear threat, we spoke to Yaakov Amidjur, Major General Yaakov Amidjur. Again, he was the former National Security Advisor of Israel uh, under Prime Minister Netanyahu from 2011 to 2013. He's also with a great organization called the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. We spoke yesterday. He had a lot of very important things to say. Take a look. No matter how this turns out over the next few days, it seems like the reputation of the United States may very well be damaged in the eyes of the world, not only to our adversaries, but even our allies may be questioning if the U.S. will stand with them going forward. Uh, what do you see as some of the consequences of this U.S. withdrawal and the way it was handled? I think that the, it is very important now that the United States of America will show the world uh, and mainly its allies, but its adversaries as well, that the commitment that the Americans are, took upon themselves, they are ready to fulfill and they are ready to stand behind and with their allies. In each place and, and state, it's a different situation, of course, but all in all, I think that it is very important now to bring back the credibility of the United States of America as um, honest and fair um, ally. And for that, Americans will have to show that they are ready to fulfill their commitments. Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad were some of the terror groups uh, to congratulate the Taliban on its victory in Afghanistan. Are there any effects here for Israel of the Taliban now running Afghanistan once again and the U.S. leaving in what's been a very chaotic withdrawal? I think that the situation of Israel is different than the situation of countries in the region because we always said to the Americans and to ourselves, it's a commitment that we took upon ourselves that Israel should be in a position to defend itself by itself. We didn't ask even once that American soldiers will serve, will um, position in Israel to defend Israel. So for us, the situation basically was not changed. Israel is ready. We are paying the price for building this capability to defend ourselves by ourselves. Uh, Israel is allocating uh, 
uh, more than 5.2 of its uh, GNP for security, more than the United States of America. We have a compulsory service for almost three years for men and two years for women. So Israel took upon itself the burden of building its capability to defend itself by itself. This is why when the Americans are pulling out and the sentiment in America is not to invest anymore in these endless wars in the Middle East, uh, for Israel, it's, it's not a big change because we anyhow didn't ask the American to fight for us. For some countries in the region, um, the fact that the American umbrella does not exist anymore, or if it is exist, it's much, much less uh, strong than in the, in, the, in, in the past. It's a huge problem that because in their calculation, America is there at least partially to defend those countries. So for some countries, it's a more problematic than for Israel. The fact that in the Middle East, there are groups like Hamas and uh, Islamic Jihad and Salafi organization uh, within the Palestinians, which identify themselves with the um, Taliban. The, 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 there's a country like uh, Turkey is um, saying that it is sharing the same vision of the Taliban and so on and so forth. For us, it's not a surprise. This is what we try to convince many, many people around the world, naive enough to believe that the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood called Hamas is a different organization. No, it's a terror organization. A lot of people have asked me in recent days, what about Iran and the Taliban? What's the relationship like there? Do you have any insights on that relationship and where it may be going? It's a very interesting question. If you look at it from the ideological, religious point of view, they cannot live together. The extreme Shiites in Iran and the extreme Sunnis in, in Afghanistan cannot share the same ground when it is coming to religious. But we learned through the years that for more than a few times, very important members of the Taliban took shelter in Iran. So when it is, you know, there is a say in Arabic, uh, I am against my brother, but my brother and myself are against my cousin, the three of us against the rest. So when it is coming to share and to uh, cooperate, fighting others, and in this case, America is others, Israel is others, um, the, the whole um, countries which belong to the Western um, culture are the others, I think that they will find a way how to cooperate if will be a need in, in any of these cases. The question that I don't have an answer to how they will compromise in the border when in the one side there are extreme Shiites and the other side extreme uh, Sunnis here, there is uh, um, potential for friction, but when it will be cooperation against the others, including us, Israelis and Americans, they will find a way to cooperate. Yeah, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, Naftali Bennett, the Israeli prime minister in Washington, D.C. right now, getting ready to meet with President Biden. Uh, you obviously worked under the former prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, but as Bennett lands in D.C. during this very pivotal time, what do you think he's looking to accomplish here, General? And what do you think of the comments this week by the defense minister, Benny Gantz, that Iran may be just two months away from having the materials needed to produce a nuclear bomb? This is a very bad news. Um, the, 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 the window to stop Iran is very short, uh, very narrow. Uh, the time is very short, the window is very narrow. And, and, we, 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 and I think that one of the main um, goals of this visit is to find with the Americans, in spite of the disagreement that we have about the uh, old agreement between Iran and, and the P5 plus one. If you ask me if there is one which is above all the other goals of this visit is to find a way to contain Iran. The Americans 
after the agreements decided not to show any military option and you cannot achieve any goal with the Iranians without having on the table the military option. And I think that this is something that should be discussed between the two um, leaders. Um, we know that it is a very sensitive time in, in America and Israel is, is um, taking part in the very sad moment uh, that you are now facing, uh, that the, uh, um, some um, American uh, soldiers had been killed in, in, in Afghanistan and many um, Afghanistanis, but uh, from the point of view of Israel, this is the main issue in this visit, to find the common ground how to contain Iran with the new administration in Washington. Thanks again to General Amidjur, as always, for joining us again. Check out his great work at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. What a week, what a busy news week. Of course, we will continue to bring you breaking updates on the situation in Afghanistan. If anything happens over the weekend, we will come to you. Be sure again to click the notification bell when you subscribe so you get alerts if we do indeed post some videos, some newscast updates this weekend. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.